Where cotton, pineapple and cattle farms once stood, lion now roam their habitat again, alongside some traditional neighbours. <laughs> sees its responsibility to the region extending beyond restoration of habitat and wildlife. It provides schools and a clinic for the local Zulu community as well as employment. In the eyes of Andrew Lewis, essential ingredients for a successful operation. It's very important to involve the communities around your reserve because they have to benefit as well. There's no point in just taking land, get some investors to invest in it. But if you don't allow the people who are on the periphery of that reserve to benefit from it, you're going to have a immense problem with poaching and they're going to cut your fences down and you're just going to have an uphill battle. In 1992, the pinder lions were among the first of the big five animals to be relocated to the reserve. The original pride came from the northern province of South Africa, a vast scrubby region flanked by the ragged Drakensberg Mountains near the Mozambique border. Peter Rogers helped round up Pinder's first pride, handling the lion's capture and subsequent move south. Today, he's head vet at the Hutzpreut Research and Breeding Centre for Endangered Species, overseeing its cheetah breeding program. But it's the discovery of what's believed to be a long extinct strain of lion that has put Peter's centre on the map. We were involved in the rescue of these circus animals that came down through Africa and were abandoned in Maputo. We were just found by a, an animal a welfare group called Animal Defenders based in London. And they said, you know, could we just keep these animals temporary? First they mentioned tigers and then they came back and said, well, there's six lions as well. So we said, yeah, we could hold them temporary just to, until they found permanent homes for them, uh, but basically get them out of that predicament that they were and the shocking conditions that they were in, in, in Maputo and Mozambique. When the lions arrived at the breeding centre, their size, pale colouring and the male's thick black belly mane put them into the category of the Cape or Barbary lion, not seen in the wild since the early 1920s. A few still exist in captivity, and a male and female were brought to South Africa from an Italian zoo for breeding purposes. But attempts to mate Arkef, the big male from the ill-fated Mozambique circus, with the Italian female are proving difficult. Arkef is overprotective, even preventing the lioness from eating when the meat truck arrives. Finally though, Sissi makes her breakthrough. We'll see you up in the front there, Mark. You're going to go to that sort of middle central area. Where are you going to go? In the next enclosure, Arturo, the Italian Barbary male, is about to be sedated. His attention to his sister Cece through the fence is hampering mating efforts and Peter Rogers is keen to move the big male. He shoots the dart into Arturo's rump. 
Arturo has been sterilized. But while his breeding days are finished, he'll live out his days at the center. His female companion, another Barbary from the Mozambique circus, is drawn away by the meat trap. It's 20 minutes before the anesthetic takes effect. just to put him back into the cage, okay? Anesthetic gives Peter Rogers and his team a chance to check over the 12-year-old lion. He'll spend a few weeks in this cage before being returned to his enclosure for observation. It's very exciting to be part of this project because um, they, they feel that there are perhaps not many Barbaries, if any, that are really pure, that are left even in captivity. They feel that over time other animals from other, other genetic bases are brought in. So there's a big project afoot at Oxford University to do the genetics. So that's just getting off the ground now. OK. We just put under the skin in the neck if we can find the skin under this big pair of these. Normally lions wouldn't have this many ticks, but being a, from Italy, a European lion, it doesn't have that innate or inherent resistance to ticks. It does come with time. Immediate hmm? term now is to get these ones to breed. And we'll take it day by day from here and, and, and see how it goes. But the, the, the prime object initially was just to get these animals back into good health and it's developed into something a lot bigger. <laughs> Yeah. While the breeding centre's lions are healthy, it's not the case a few kilometres away in the Kruger National Park, where TB has ravaged half the population. Infected buffalo have been blamed for the outbreak, primarily in the south of the park. And attempts are being made to fence off the diseased area. And the lions are preying on infected buffalo. Of course it's an exotic disease, not a, an indigenous disease. The lions are totally naive and they've got no resistance to it. So it's, it's a big problem. Uh, it's, a, it's a very difficult decision to make as to what to do. It's a very topical and heated subject at the moment.
in Pinder, the night stalk has begun. Nabambo keeps her cubs close. They're hungry, but tonight only Impala can be tracked down, a morsel for the lioness. Food is scarce at this time of year, so the pride's territory covers a large area. Lions can only afford to be territorial where there is a reliable supply of game. Jabu wants to mate. He's been with his pride for nearly a year now. But Nabambo would prefer a larger group of males around her. Eventually, though, Jabu will have to join forces with other males to have a chance of keeping this pride. The big male is only seven years old and a fine specimen, weighing in at just under 200 kilograms. For the moment, he's secure. Although tonight, Nabambo has hunting on her mind. The cubs follow in the lioness's wake. If there is a kill, she will feed first. Often, weak cubs lose out to a hungry mother. High juvenile mortality rates are the result of lean times. Jabu has had enough. He's been walking for hours. Sleep is more important. And the zebra he ate two days ago will suffice for another night. Nabambo has made a kill, a young Nyala buck. It's been three days since the pride has eaten, and this will provide meat for them all. But the lioness will eat first. The cubs know the routine. They will get their turn. But Nkosi is hungry. He creeps towards his mother, as the biggest of the cub. In Kossi watches, a lioness can eat more than 20 kilograms in a single sitting. This could be a long wait for the little cub. Nkosi approaches the kill cautiously. Sometimes a lioness will turn on her cubs. But today, Nebambo is pleased with her efforts. Bambo has had her fill, for the moment anyway. Lions never eat the stomach of a kill. She will bury it before dragging off the carcass. This way, hyenas and other predators are thrown off the scent. The evidence has been buried. The carcass is no more. Nabambo's daughter hears the call. It is the second this morning. The first was the strangling cry of the Nyala as Nabambo broke the young buck's back. There was no struggle. The big lioness is a seasoned hunter.
the rest of the pride will feast on the carcass after Nabamba retires. But first, they will drag it into the bushes, away from prying eyes, away from the raptors already circling the kill scene. anxious to protect its waterhole. The wildebeest are a favourite prey for lions. Naturally, they feel vulnerable. But for the pride, there is no agitation. Gorged, they will sleep for the next day. Even Mveli and Damana, the seven-week twins, have tasted blood for the first time. But it will be many months before they take part in a hunt. For the moment, they just want to play with Nkosi. The older cub is beginning to take on the shaggy mane of the bigger males. Within 18 months, he will be hunting with them, competing for his own pride. In the meantime, though, he has to contend with his young siblings. Jabu rejoins the pride. He has missed out on the kill, but he didn't share his zebra with the rest of the pride the previous day. A half-hearted attempt at mating, but the big lion's attention is drawn to a curious onlooker. With the pride so close, the giraffe won't be sitting for long. Drinking and sitting is when they are at their most vulnerable. Jabu keeps an eye on his group. Pride takeovers by other males are common and savage fights can occur between the pride male and the intruder. If a takeover is successful, the new male will usually kill all the suckling young of his former rival. When a nursing mother loses her cubs, she comes into heat within a few weeks. The normal interval between cubs is about two years, with a gestation time of three to four months. Jabu marks his territory but it may soon be all in vain. A fresh infusion of lion genes is necessary to avoid the effects of long-term inbreeding. It's likely Jabu and his son Tembi will be swapped for males from another game reserve. This will broaden the bloodlines of future lions and avoid the genetic risks currently facing the pride at Pinda. Vultures have found the dead buck, but there is little left of the carcass. Nabamba and her pride have eaten. The big lioness tries to dislodge Junyala fur from her teeth. Tomorrow, the next day, there will be another kill. Nabamba's cubs will grow up strong.
The lion is the greatest of all predators, the essence of all that is Africa. And yet, there are fewer than 50,000 left in the wild. The future for the species lies in managed reserves such as Pinda. Here in Zululand, the lion roams free for the first time since the beginning of this century. At Pinda, the philosophy has always been simple. Africa's wildlife land, undervalued and underutilized, is the continent's most precious natural resource. Focusing on the animals, their habitat and local communities is just the beginning of an African renaissance. Pinda is, after all, the Zulu word for return. Maybe too, it's a chance for man to redeem himself just a little.